All right, let's take a look at this problem. Well, we're given a gigantic electric dipole because the dipole distance is 0.5 meters, so half a meter stick. So it's certainly not a typical atomic and molecular type of a dipole. And our dipole vector P we are given is initially pointing straight up here at position B, and we know that's our zero joule potential energy value, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Now, the electric field we are given in this problem, we can see these uniformly spaced straight lines, so the electric field here, E, right, is given as 10 newtons per coulomb, and that's in the positive x hat direction always. Well, let's see what they're asking us to solve for. The first thing they ask us to solve for is the magnitude of the p-vector. So the magnitude of the p-vector is q times d. It's a 1 coulomb charge. We are given the 1 coulomb up here. The d, as we said, was the half meter, so we have 0.5 coulomb meters for the dipole value. Now, for the torque you need to go into cross product vector C equals vector A cross vector B. In this case, it's torque equals vector P cross vector E. So take those vectors drawn from a common origin to get the sine of the angle between them. So the sine of our angle 90 degrees here comes from the P vector and the E vector being drawn from a common origin. Magnitude of the first, the 0.5 we just calculated magnitude of the second, the electric field we know. So we get 5 newton meters, and please don't forget your right-hand rule. So please review that if you need to. If we do P cross E, that is a thumb into the paper, negative Z hat torque. Now, when the dipole is pointing to point C, so when the dipole points to C, we get sine of 0 degrees. Angle between the two, sine of 0 is 0, 0 torque. P cross E, draw the vectors from a common origin. Now the P vector they're telling us is going towards point E, so that's down here. So the P, that P vector and our E vector give us an angle here, right? So if we're told this is 60, that means we have 30 and 90. That's where the 120 comes from. So we get a torque of 4.3. And notice now we have a positive z hat because when we do the P, right, cross with our E, that is going to be a little bit contorted, but a thumb out of the paper, a positive z hat torque. Same for the potential energies. You simply let the equation calculate the joule value, and we'll talk about how that joule value impacts our calculation for kinetic energy in Part D. But as far as our joule values go, right, when it's at position Z, it's negative PE sine theta. So you use negative P or PE cosine theta, sorry, negative PE cosine theta to calculate the joule values. So negative P, we calculated up here, was 0.5. The electric field is 10. Uh, cosine of 0 degrees, because we're at position C, right? So cosine of 0 degrees, so we get negative 5 joules. At 90 degrees, negative PE cosine theta, so cosine of 90 is 0. That gives us our 0 joules. So we have a PE min at negative 5. We have 0 joules at the top, and that means if the dipole we're at position A. We're not asked to calculate the potential at position A, but the dipole at position A then has a potential energy max of point of positive 5. So we lose 5 when the dipole rotates from 180 to 0. So now we would have 5 joules of kinetic energy. We drop another 5 joules as we go from 0 joules to negative 5 joules. So here we would have 10 total joules of rotational kinetic energy if it were to rotate from A to C. Well, the potential energy value, we're just calculating values at the moment, the potential energy value to position E gives us negative 0.510 cosine of 120, so positive 2.5 when it's at position E. So let's see how the problem asks us to kind of make sense of what's going on here. 
It says how much work in part D, how much work is done by the electric field, work done by the electric field as the dipole rotates from B to C? Well, if it it's final, right, delta U, right? Work done by the field is negative the change in potential energy. Negative, right? Final minus initial. The initial is zero. The final is minus five. So there you have it. Our equation tells us what we could just look at spatially and see we went from zero and dropped five, so our loss of five joules of potential energy became a positive five joules. Work done by the field, and that work done by the field would be seen as the kinetic energy of rotation of the dipole. All right, last bit here. So there's a lot going on here. Hopefully it's beginning to make dipole rotations a little clearer to you. Here we are asked to look at the dipole rotating from B to position E. So if the dipole is released from rest at its initial position, so if it's released from rest up here at position B, how much energy would have to be gained by the dipole to reach position E? Well, what we need to look at is what will happen naturally versus what would we, we have to do to force it to get there. In this case, the dipole initially starting at position B would rotate to align with the E field, it would rotate past, it would oscillate down to position D, and then it would oscillate back. So naturally, it would go between B and D. And let me clean up my mess here so I can talk a little bit more about this. So naturally, this dipole, right, would go between B and D. But we want the dipole to be released from B and make it all the way over to E. So basically it needs this much additional energy. So how do we calculate how much additional energy it takes to go from D to E? Well, we can take a look at what the potential energy values are at those points. So the dipole will rotate from B to D, as we said, without any additional energy needed. The extra energy comes when we need to go from D to E. Well, let's just look at D to E. So if my final right, is going to be at position E minus my initial at position D, right, zero joules of potential energy down here because we still have that 90 degree angle between the P and the E vector. So the work done by the field is going to be negative the change in potential energy. So now the work done by the field is negative. And that should make sense because if I were to flick the dipole from D to E, right, I would need to flick it with a positive 2.5 joules of energy. So you would need to flick it this way with 2.5 joules of energy, kinetic energy. Now the field is going to slow it down, do negative work, bring it to a stop at this point. And that is how we get our work needed by us to flick it versus the work done by the field. So a lot going on in this example. It's a really important example to understand each of the steps that is here. So please review what you need to review. Ask questions in class, and we will move on from dipoles.